am so excited to be here. This is truly amazing how God orchestrates everything because they were being very nice, not to say that I was the loudest person in Dubai 10 years ago and that the guy didn't even have to use drop. He could just sit there and he could still hear what we were talking about because I'm so loud. I told the sound guys, like, make sure you, you know, you lower my mic because when I start ex getting excited, Holy Spirit starts moving, I start shouting, so y'all prepare, embrace yourself. This is going to be fun this morning. <laughs> but it's just incredible how God works because back then when I came here with Jennifer to celebrate, she had just gra graduated and getting her doctorate in physical therapy, and I came to, to celebrate with her. I was a seminary student myself in Dallas going to the King's University, and here I am 10 years later. I got ordained as a pastor in Brazil last year by my Brazilian pastors, and here I am invited to preach and bring the Word of God. So this this is such an honor. It's really exciting. It's amazing how God, you know, is weaving and working in our lives, and we never know, right? Just believing God and praying. It's like, let's pray right now. You know, the power of prayer is so powerful. It moves mountains. It moves heaven on earth, and God chooses to use us to bring his will on us, on earth, for us, but it requires us to join our faith with him because Jesus is interceding for us. He's interceding for things that he wants to do in our lives. But we have to come into agreement. We have to posture our heart to receive what God has for us. And that's what I wanted to start this morning. The title of my message is Heart Posture. And really is to start this morning just posturing our heart to receive from God. So let's just you know, like right now, just position our hearts to receive and let's pray. And let's pray, like open your mouth. You don't like just be quiet, but let's really invite God to move. Let's just, so you can either pray in your heart or pray with, you know, your, your open mouth. But let's just right now, just make a moment of prayer, inviting God to come and move. Oh, Father God, we thank you. We thank you, God, that you are here. That mosaic is yours. That mosaic is your plan, God. That mosaic was in your heart before it was in Jeremy's heart. Lord, thank you that every, everything was already in place, God, for this church. Thank you, God, that you saw each person already who is here this morning, God. You have called each one here, God, because you have a plan and a purpose for their lives, Lord. So 10 years ago, God, you set up this church, this amazing church. God, that is after your heart, that, that is after you, Jesus, I just want you to come and move and have your way, God. So we invite you this morning to have your way. We posture our hearts, Lord, to receive what you have for us, God. You take us from glory to glory. You never leave us stagnant, Lord. You're always taking us to the next level. What is the next for us? Each one over here is in a different journey in life, Lord, but you want this morning to challenge us to go to the next step. What is the next step? So we invite you, Holy Spirit. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to come and move in this place. You are welcome. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. You have freedom in this place. The only spirit allowed to move in this place is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. So we honor you this morning, Holy Spirit. We invite you. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the King of Kings, that you are the Lord of Lords. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You begin this church, God, and you're going to multiply and take it, Lord, everywhere you want. So thank you for Mosaic. Thank you for Pastor Jeremy and Ellen, everyone here, God, who is part of this church. We bless your name, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, you're moving already. I'm so excited. So I... Um, I just love that how God really connections is really, uh, it's so beautiful to see how God brings people together for a purpose. So when I was 20 years old, I was working at a Brazilian restaurant in Dallas, Texas. And this beautiful young lady came to work uh, at, the at, at the restaurant. And her name is Jennifer 
was Jennifer Cole, and she was uh, Dr. Dawn and Sharon's daughter, Jeremy's sister, and there was something different about this girl, and I, I was just drawn to her. It was the Jesus in her, even though I didn't know. But we quickly became best friends. And I started following Jennifer to church. So I would go to church with Jennifer, and I would sit there, like you're sitting, listening, and but I did not have a relationship with Jesus. I grew up in Brazil, going to a Catholic church, being a good Catholic girl, you know, going to Catholic school and praying the prayers, but I did not have a relationship with Jesus. Nobody had truly explained to me the gospel, how to receive Jesus, to receive salvation. I knew who Jesus was. I knew that he had died, been crucified and resurrected, but I fully didn't understand why. It was never a thought of to question, but I would go to church, and I, but everything was perfect in my life. It looked perfect. I had a great job. I, I was the top salesperson at a software company. I was very ambitious, very aggressive. I had to, you know, reach my quota and excel every month, and I always did it. I had a beautiful family, a wonderful husband, two precious little girls, a wonderful uh, life, like a beautiful house, nice cars. I had everything, but I was empty on the inside. I would cry myself to sleep, and I was depressed, and I decided to go see a therapist. And the therapist was not even Christian, but he really helped because God can use anybody. And during this um, therapy sessions, God used this man to highlight, he said, we need to figure out what is missing in your life. I'm like, missing? What could be missing? My life is perfect. And, you know, Anthony just shared how there was something missing. And, and finally, um, I started, like, thinking maybe there is something missing, but what is it? And at the same time, there was a couple from Brazil that would come clean my house every two weeks. And I didn't know, unbeknownst to me, they had been praying for me. They've been praying for God to save me. Every time this lady, Chisa, would make my bed, she would lay her hands on the pillow. And she would pray for God's mercy to save me. And they were, she was part of a small Brazilian church in Dallas, and they were doing something called Encounter with God, which was a three-day weekend, and they passed around a sheet of paper, and they said, write down the name of the people for us to pray, for God to bring them to this encounter, someone that you believe in that God wants to bring salvation to them. And they put my name in that sheet of paper, and I... I just adore them. They were just a wonderful couple. So one day, I was venting. I was full of anger and bitterness and venting. I was just venting. I wasn't angry at them, but I was just unleashing my anger on them. And the boldness of the Lord came upon this man who was usually very quiet. And he said, you need an encounter with God. And I was like, an encounter with God? What does that look like? And he said, come to this church retreat and you will have an encounter with God. And I was just desperate at the time. And I was like, fine, sign me up. Well, the time came for me to go to this church. And they did not let us take our cars because they did not want us changing our minds. So I had to park my car at this church. And they got in a van and it drove, we drove an hour to a camp you know, where they did church camp. And I just remember arriving there like this, like, what am I doing here? And at the same time, the pastor was like, most people arrive with their arms crossed on Sunday. I mean, on Friday, and they leave like this on Sunday. And that was exactly what happened to me. The next morning on Saturday, they started sharing testimonies. And this is the power of testimony. Everyone, each and every one of you have a powerful testimony because it's your story with God on how God, the creator of all the universe, reached down and saved you and, and touched your life. So your testimony is powerful. And that's what I'm doing today is I'm sharing my story with God. And I want to encourage each and every one of you to you know, share your testimony because it will inspire others because that's what happened. As I'm sitting there listening to these testimonies, 
I was in awe. This, you know, like listening to this woman who was in severe bondage. She was a prostitute. She was selling her body for money. And now she is serving the Lord. And she has this glow about her. She has this joy. And I was like, what? This is amazing. So one testimony after another, it was like God was like uh, bringing down walls in my heart and just really preparing my heart for what he wanted to do, the transformation that he wanted to do do to get my heart positioned to receive him and everything was scripture based I did not have a bible at the time so on the way to that to that church I had to stop by I didn't even know what you know I walk in there it's like I need a bible and they're like what translation I'm like translation <laughs> I had no idea they gave me an NIV bible thank God and I, you know but so different the first time they're like open and then they start going through the gospels and it was like the scriptures were leaping and, and I was like wow this is amazing and I can actually understand because the Holy Spirit was working in me and then um, they just did some really amazing things at this retreat because the Lord knew that I needed it was, it was going to be a process to get my heart ready so they started sharing the gospel and they start sharing about like really helping us realize that we needed a savior so they gave us a sheet of paper and say write down all your shame guilt things that you have done that you're ashamed of things that have been weighing you down things that you would like to be have removed from your life and so I'm writing it all down, you know. They even gave us, a, you know, a sheet to help us with things that sometimes we get involved in the occult, in witchcraft, and we don't even know, like reading horoscope, getting involved in ast astrology, and some tarot reading cards, you know, hand palm reading, things like that that I, you know, grew up doing it because in Brazil it was kind of common, you know. So I, just things like that, and I'm like, you know, that is a sin, that is from the occult, and I was like, so I was like writing those things down, and then you're like, this is what God does when we realize that we're a sinner, and that we need salvation, that we need forgiveness, and we come to God and say, God, forgive me for all these things, you know, he forgives us and he takes it away so to make an illustration they they built a campfire and they said now just have a moment with God and say God please forgive me for all of these things for all these things that I got involved in all these doors that I opened in my life please forgive me for the way I treated people and all these things right and then you know when you're ready you just go and you throw that paper in the pit in the pit and you'll see it burn God chooses to forget our sins. It just disappears. And that was like blowing my mind. It was like a huge weight just coming off my shoulders. And I could just feel lighter because I wasn't carrying the burden of my sin, of my shame. And then they, they did things like close your eyes and, and they put a nail in our, hand, in our hands and just say visualize all your pain, all your suffering, all sickness, everything that you want to get rid of your life, that you want God to come and heal you and from physically, emotionally, spiritually. And when you're ready, just visualize that Jesus paid it all. He took everything. He bore your shame and your sickness on the cross. And when you're ready, put that on the cross. And I did. And I nailed my sins and my shame and my guilt and everything on that cross. And everything was so like just a process of, of really preparing my heart, getting my heart ready, positioning to what God wanted to do. And then they shared the clip of the passion of Christ. And I got to see for the first time the crucifixion of Christ. Even though I knew, I had never imagined, I never pictured how much Jesus had suffered for me. What he paid. He loved me that much that he died on that cross. That he was thinking of me. He was thinking of each and every one of you when he was on that cross. Because he loves you that much. And that was very impactful. So when they said, okay, so if you would like to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, stand up. So I stood up. And people were clapping and crying. My friends were there. You know, the people who have been praying for me had, were crying. And I didn't understand. Like, why are you crying? Like, this sounds amazing. I mean, why would I not stand up? 
Well, the next morning, as I, it was breakfast time, this older gentleman came to me and he said, that was the best decision you have ever going to make in your life. And I was like, what do you mean? I mean, decision? I said, I've, I've known who Jesus is, you know, who Jesus was and what he did. Like, I, I mean, I grew up knowing who Jesus is. Like, you're missing the point. It's not that you know who Jesus is, but that you accept what he did for you on the cross, that you receive freely the gift of salvation. And that's when I was like, oh, it started turning. I'm a, I'm a little slow, y'all. It took me a little time to really start getting what, what, they were, what God was trying to tell me. He was like, I died for you. It's a gift. Receive as a gift. And I was like, wow, okay, okay. But, you know, the, then on Sunday, they started talking about the Holy Spirit. And I had never heard, you know, it was like, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and that was it. You know, I didn't know much about the Holy Spirit, just the third person in the Trinity, but I did not know about the person of the Holy Spirit. That was new, and that started, like, really um, in, it, like really positioning my heart because it was something new that was missing in my life that I had no idea so uh, they started sharing scriptures like Ezekiel 36, 25. And it says, because look, God prepares us. Just like I'm preparing you that I'm taking you on a journey of what's next. And, it, and God prepares us from the Old Testament. You can see Jesus. You can see the Holy Spirit weaved through scripture. It's all about him. So Ezekiel 36, 25 says, then I will sprinkle clean water on you. And you will be clean. Your filth will be washed away. And you will no longer worship idols. Hallelujah. And I will give you a new heart. And I will put a spirit, a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart. And I will give you a tender, responsive heart. And I will put my spirit in you so that you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulations. I was like, wow. And here it is. You know, it's really about the heart, positioning the heart, a tender, responsive heart. The heart is, is, is what, you know, needs to be positioned to receive this gift. So that was like very impactful. And then they started talking about... Pentecost. Ella mentioned that we're celebrating Pentecost and how amazing. Just the timing of the Lord. Ella's been inviting me here for six months, but it's just the timing is just worked out now as we are celebrating Pentecost, the anniversary of what God did, that he poured out his spirit on earth. And it, Jesus said, don't be sad. I have to leave. I have to go to the Father so that I can send you the helper, the advocate. It's much better for you that I go so that the Spirit of God comes and he will empower you to be my witness all over the world. And greater miracles you will do because my Spirit will be in you. Hallelujah. It is, yes, thank you, Jesus, for that promise, the promise of the Holy Spirit. So, on, you know, they started reading Acts 2. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place, just like this. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven, like a roaring and a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then... What looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Wow, what a day. And then they're like, oh, these you know, people start hearing this noise and this commotion. So they came to see what is going on. And people were quick to judge because people would judge the things of God that they don't know that they haven't experienced. So they're like, I don't know about that. That looks crazy. Those people are drunk. And Peter hears that. I was like, it's 9 a.m. We are not drunk. And this is what he says. He, was, he started saying, it was like, these people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. It's 9 o'clock in the morning. It's much too early for that. 
No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. So we're reading in Acts 2, 17, it says, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon you all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. And your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on my sermons, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in heavens above and signs on earth below. But Every and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, I was stirred up and I was like, this, this, this is what, this is what, this is what I need. This is what is missing in my life. This is a, it's something I hadn't heard about yet. And the story and story, and they were sharing stories about what started happening when the, the church started and how people were being baptized in water and accepting Jesus. But the apostles were asking, but have you received the power of the Holy Spirit? Have you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And then, you know, they, they said, said is like um, then you know Paul laid his hands on them and the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in other tongues and prophesied there were about 12 and all so as a pastor it, Paul is laying hands on people they're getting filled with the Holy Spirit I was like this is amazing uh, by that time my heart was ready my heart was postured to receive what God had for me and uh, at that moment they were like let's invite the Holy Spirit to move. So they just moved all the chairs. They started playing worship music. And they said, pray, pray, pray. Invite the Holy Spirit to move in your life. Worship Jesus. Cry out to Jesus. So for the first time ever, because, you know, I was a good Catholic girl who would recite her prayers. But for the first time, I am crying out to Jesus. I am asking. I'm desperate. I am desperate. I was like, I, this is it. I found what's missing in my life, and I need your spirit, God. I need you to pour out your spirit. So at that same moment, there, I hear this heavenly language, and I open my, my eyes, and there's a pastor praying with this lady, and she's speaking in this heavenly language. And I'm like, I just read about this in the Bible, and it's happening right before my eyes. And I'm like, wow. Well, at the same time, this lady who was really dealing with depression, she had been just every time um, she would say something, it was really dark, it was down, it, it was discouraging. And I knew that she was coming to say something against that. She was judging what was just happening, and I knew that that was God, and I did not want anything to taint what God was wanting to do in me. So for, I had been nice to her the entire time, except that time. I'm like, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear what you have to say. And she was like, but I was like, I don't want to hear it. I need that blessing for me. I want that blessing for me. Three times she tried to stop me, and three times I decided I want that. I desire that. I want that blessing for me. At that moment, the pastor had just finished praying with that woman. I went over there and I grabbed him. I said, will you help me? I need this blessing for me. And he's like, okay, just glorify the name of Jesus. Just keep saying, I glorify the name of Jesus. So he puts his hand on me and he said, and he started praying for me. And I was like, I glorify the name of Jesus. I glorify the name of Jesus. I glorify the name of Jesus. And then all of a sudden, I sense this liquid love. This presence of God from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. And it was like electricity. It was like, it was like at that moment, love was coming in and darkness was coming out. That oppression, that depression left. And I felt joy. I felt alive for the first time. And I, I was like, I started saying, you know, I, I, well, as I kept saying, I glorified the name of Jesus. My tongue got really thick. And I, but the music was so loud. I was like, I don't think I'm saying that. Well, Pastor Priscilla put the microphone in my mouth and I could hear myself speaking in that same heavenly language and I was like wow you know I was like it's just like it's just an emotion that is just incredible and all I it just lasted for I don't know a minute or so I, I don't know how long it, but I 
I, I was like, I had an encounter with God. I had an encounter with God. And they were selling a T-shirt that said encounter with God. And I did not want to pay the $10 because to that point, I had not had an encounter with God. But that was the first thing I did. Give me that T-shirt. I am putting it on. I had an encounter with God. I go to my friends and I said, thank you. Thank you. I had an encounter with God. And I picked up the phone and I called my mom in Brazil. And I said, mom, please forgive me. Forgive me, Mon, for, for how I hurt you. And I forgive you for how you hurt me. And I called my husband and I told him, like, I'm a changed person. I'm a different person. Boy, he had no idea how much I had changed. And that's a whole nother story for another day. <laughs> well, I went back to work the next day. And um, at 10 a.m., we always had a sales meeting with the president. I, re I reported directly to the president. And after, you know, he did the normal spiel, he asked, does anybody have anything to share and I said I do <laughs> I said yesterday I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and I am a new creation and he's like okay <laughs> and then I turned to Robbie I, I have been so mean to Robbie y'all you don't understand Robbie was another salesperson and I, I was like he was not aggressive like I was ambitious like I was I drove everybody crazy I was the terror of the office that one time the HR manager this is true story I'm not making this up the HR HR manager, together with the technical support manager, came into my office, sat down, and said, will you please resign? <laughs> I was like, what? He's like, you are the terror of the office. Everybody comes crying in my office because of you. Can you, you know, I already asked the president to fire you, but he won't. <laughs> because I brought the money. He didn't care how I treated people. I was making the company successful, but I was making everybody miserable. So they were trying to get rid of me, and I was like, I am not leaving. <laughs> Well, that day, I turned to Robbie, who was my number one victim, and I said, Robbie, I am so sorry. Please forgive me. I am sorry I have been so mean to you. And I didn't even know that he was a worship pastor, <laughs> Pastor OJ. Yes. Yes, a worship pastor. And it, it, it was, what's incredible is that we became actually really good friends. And we end up, end up starting a prayer meeting, a prayer group. After the sales meeting on, on Mondays, we, I asked the president, I was like, can we start a prayer group? Uh, uh, you know, pray, have a prayer meeting afterwards, and he was like, sure. He had a problem with it after it was started turning into three hours long. <laughs> he was like, y'all have to tone it down, right? But everybody was like amazed because I went around the office asking people for forgiveness because when there's a repentance, it, your life must change. If you're going one way, when you accept Christ and the Spirit of God comes about, it there needs to be a different direction. You need to change. If you have not experienced that yet, if you're still struggling with a sin that you can't break, that's because your life might not have been surrendered. Look, at, I was going to church, but I had not been, had an experience with God to like position my heart to fully receive salvation so I wasn't saved. I knew about Jesus. There was a lot of head knowledge around the world about Jesus, but how about the intimate relationship? It's about intimacy, not religion. So... Uh, my, my life just truly transformed. I did not care about selling software anymore. I wanted to sell Jesus. I just wanted to evangelize. I didn't want to work anymore. And I was like, God, you have healed me. You have delivered me. You have set me free. What can I do for you? And I would pray that every morning going to work. And then God gave me this idea, which I'll come back and tell you more about it. And it, it, it was to celebrate underprivileged children. It was to celebrate their life, their purpose. Kids that had never had a birthday party before, they were receiving a birthday party from Jesus and the gifts that the, the, they desired that the parents couldn't give it all came from Jesus. It's just a beautiful ministry, but it taught me what it means to have a relationship with Jesus. It taught me how to depend in, in, in Christ. 
And then I went to uh, seminary school. It, it just got, and I fully didn't understand because I didn't need a seminary degree in order to throw birthday parties for underprivileged children. But it's just amazing how God has a plan for each and every one of you. And, it, it, and there's always the next step. So I accepted Christ. I got filled with the Holy Spirit. And then I was like, what is next, God? And I went, you know, like he was like, do you want a ministry? <laughs> you know, he gave a ministry. I started serving at church. I started tithing. I joined a small group. And then I went to seminary school. And then here I am today sharing with you what God has done in my life. So this morning, I really want to encourage you to posture your heart and ask the Lord, what is the next for me, God? What do you have for me? Do I have a relationship with you? And may today, may today be a, a time that he transfers from a head knowledge to a heart knowledge where you're like, I want that heart transformation, God. I want you to take my stony, stubborn heart. I want you to break every chain of bondage. I am done with that sin, and I am ready to fully live committed to you. That is a decision to accept Christ. So I'm going to give you a moment in just a moment to, to decide if you want to make today the day that you open your heart to Jesus. Some of you have already done that, and that is amazing. But then there's always more. It's like, God, I want to be on fire for you. I want to be filled in the Spirit. I want to, I want to pursue the plans that you have for me. We're going to have a, a prayer team right here, if you guys want to already line up, that we, we can pray for you to receive a touch from God. The next step could be maybe you guys just give a little offering, but you're not trusting the Lord with your tithe by giving 10% of your salary, you, the next step would be trust God in your finances and just watch out the blessings. Look, you guys, God will blow your mind. He really will. The minute you step out in faith and decide, God, I will do what the Bible says and I will give you the 10%, it's amazing what God does. So another step would be join a small group. Because in small groups, you get to really get to know each other, and you can be praying for each other, and it just becomes a family. Another, another step could be lead a small group. It could be um, a, start serving at the church. The church is growing. Start inviting people, sharing your faith, evangelizing. There, every single one of us have a next step because God never leaves us the same. He's always growing us. He's never going to stop growing us until we meet Jesus in heaven. So right now, I really want to ask each and every one to just close your eyes. Do you have a moment with Jesus? Have a moment with the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, how is my heart this morning? Search me, O oh Lord. Search my heart. Is there anything in my heart that displeases you? What are you speaking to me? Make it personal. Envision Jesus speaking to you. Say, God, what is my next step with you? I want to go deeper with you. I want more. I want to be excited for you, Jesus. I want to encounter you in new ways. So if you this morning have had this realization that you never fully open your heart, that Jesus had been knocking at the door of your heart, this morning is an opportunity for you to open and say, Jesus, come in. I'm full in. I'm all in for you, Jesus. Come on in. If that is you this morning, with every eye closed and every head bound, just acknowledge, just raise up your, let me, let me see your hand up and you're saying to Jesus, Jesus, I want you. I want you to come. Thank you, God. Thank you for moving in their hearts, Lord. Thank you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you, God, for what you're doing this morning in these hearts, Lord. Thank you, God. I pray, Lord, that you just fill them with your Holy Spirit right now, Lord, as they're saying yes to you, God. You say yes to them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. Touch their lives, Jesus. Each and every one of you that have raised their hearts, the Bible says that if you believe, you can put your hands down. If you, if you believe, Romans 10, 9 says, if you believe in your heart, 
that Jesus is Lord and confess with your mouth that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So it's a two-step process. One is you believe in your heart. The next thing is you confess with your mouth. You tell someone. And we have a prayer team and we have pastors around the room. Just come to them and say, I accepted Jesus. I open my heart to Jesus today. Because you know what, They're, they want to make sure that they follow up with you. Because it is the best decision you will ever make. And it's something to be proud of. It's something to be excited about. And it's something to tell people about. And let this, the church come around you and help you grow in discipleship, in getting to know Jesus, your Lord and Savior. So I thank you, God, for this moment. Thank you that you touched lives. Thank you for the salvations this morning. And Lord, I pray that this is just the beginning, Lord. I know that there's much more that you want to do here. So continue moving in this morning and during the time of prayer, Lord. We worship you. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, God. We give you all the honor and all the glory. Amen.